Good day everybody! Pag-aaralan natin ngayon ay methods of presenting data. Ito ay textual, tabular, at graphical. By the car, the blows. Yeah, I wanna try myself inside the Pag-aaralan natin ngayon ay methods of presenting data. Ito ay ang textual, tabular, at graphical. So, let's begin with textual presentation of data. The data gathered are usually in paragraph form. It is also used when there are only few data to be represented. Say, for example, we have there were 68 females and 32 males in a study conducted on the sports they played. So as you see here, these data are composed of text and numbers. So the text are the females and the males in a study, while the numbers are 68 and 32. Now let us have the second method in presenting the data, and that is tabular presentation of data. So it is a systematic and logical arrangement of data in the form of rows and columns with respect to the characteristics of data. It makes use of tables. Say for example, we have these parts of a statistical table. The first one is table heading. It consists of table number and title, while stubs are the classifications or categories which can be found at the left side of the body of the table. And we have box head. Box head is the top of the table. Another one is footnote. When you say footnotes, these are the statements or notes inserted. And the next one is body. It is the main part of the table. And lastly is the source note. This is the sort of the statistics. Say we have this example. So I have here a tabular presentation of data. So this one, Table 15, Projected Household Dependency by Age Group and Sex, is what we call the Table Heading, while this part is what we call the Box Head. And this one, this part, is what we call the stubs and this main part is what we call the body and as you see below this table are the footnotes and source note so which one is the source note so this one is what we call a source note and the last one projection is based on the 2010 population census is what we call the footnotes. So these are the parts of the tabular presentation of data. And next but not the least, let us study the graphical presentation of data. So the usual graphical presentation of data are method of presenting data using graph, chart, or diagram. And this is a method which enables us in studying the cause and effect relationship between two variables. And here are the examples. We have the bar graph, pie or circle graph, line graph, and graph. So let us begin with the first one and that is bar graph. 
So when you say bar graph, it shows relationship comparison between groups. Say we have this data. Okay? So how can we present this data in a bar graph? So as we all know, this data are presented in tabular presentation. Okay, so this is how you will make a bar graph. The first one is the title. We have age distribution of confirmed COVID-19 cases in the Philippines as of March 11, 2020. Here, by its name bar graph, we will be using these bars. So we have in our x-axis the ages. These are 19 years old and below. 20 to 29, 30 to 39, 40 to 49, 50 to 59, 60 to 69, and 70 years old and above. So as you see in our y-axis, we have the number of confirmed cases okay that is how you will make a bar graph and next one we have the pie or circle graph it shows percentage effectively so for example we have this again the data which i presented a while ago Okay, so these are the age distribution of confirmed COVID positive in the Philippines as of March 11, 2020. So we have to use the formula in finding the percentage. We have part divided by whole times 100. So this is how you will do this one. So in our 19 years old and below, there are zero cases. So we have 0 divided by the total which is 33 times 100 and our answer is 0 degrees. On the other hand, ages from 20 to 29, the number of confirmed cases is 2. So we have 2 divided by 33 times 100 and that is 6 percent now let us have the third one ages from 30 to 39 there are seven confirmed cases so we have here seven divided by 33 times 100 and we'll get a percentage of 21% same way with confirmed cases ages from 40 to 49 so we have here 21% also and 50 to 59 we have 6 confirmed cases so we will just divide 6 divided by the total which is 33 times 100 and we'll get 19 percent and next one 60 to 69 with the number of confirmed cases that is 7 so we will just divide 7 by the total number of confirmed cases which is 33 times 100 and we'll get 21 percent and lastly, we have 70 years old and above, we have 4 confirmed cases. So we will just divide 4 by 33 times 100 and we will get 12%. All in all, there are 100%. So we will be using that data in our pi or circle graph. Again, this is our title, Age Distribution of Confirmed COVID-19 Cases in the Philippines as of March 11, 2020. So using this 
literally a pie graph and we have here the legend so this color is for the 19 years old and below this orange is from 20 to 29 this gray color is for 30 to 39 and this yellow color is for the age 40 to 49 this blue color is for 50 to 59 years old green color for 60 to 69 years old and this uh, light blue is for the 70 years old and above so as we all know in pie graph we can already see the percentage okay the percentage of the data so we have based on our data there are six percent for 20 to 29 years old on the other hand there are 21 percent for 30 to 39 same way with 40 to 49 but there is 19% for 50 to 59 and for 60 to 69 which is green color there are 21% and for the light blue or the 70 years old and above there is 12% so all in all the total percentage is 100 so that is how you will make a pie graph that is how you will present your data using the pie or circle graph now let us have the line graph so what's the line graph so line graph is most useful in displaying data that changes continuously over time say for example we have this data again so we will be presenting our data in a line graph so a line graph it is composed of this one a point connected to each other so this one in our x axis is our ages and this is our y axis which are the number of confirmed cases okay so re always remember in our y axis those are the group or data which can be changing okay and in our x as axis these are the data which cannot be changed okay this is how you will present our data using the line graph so the dot is connected with the lines that is the line graph next is the last one which is pictograph so when you say pictograph it uses a small identical or figures of object called isotopes in making comparisons and each picture represents a definite quantity so here I have the pictograph I'll be using an icon for confirmed cases so this one so this one icon represent one unit so we have in 20 to 22 there are two people and for 30 to 39 there are one two three four five six seven persons who are confirmed positive in covid 19. for 40 to 49 we also have seven confirmed cases and for 50 to 59 there are six cases and for 60 to 69 we have seven cases and for 72 years old and above we have four cases okay again in pictograph we will be using isotopes or figures okay that is how you will present your data using a pictograph